So what this system does is it allows you to take media with records on it, turn those records into SIPs, submission information packages, put them into the system that runs on open source tools, run a bunch of processes, which you can control through an XML interface <coughs> as part of the, that's the microservices plan. Then it spits out the archival information package into something outside of the system, uh, an open archival information storage system. That could be LUX, that could be lots of copies keep stuff safe, that could be Fedora, it could be DSpace, it could be um, just the dark archive that you have. Uh, then, on top of that, you'll have an access system. That could be, that's your card catalog. That could be ICA Atom, it could be Archon, it could be Archivist Toolkit. So these are all ways that you can have one big system that incorporates a lot of open source tools and processing, but also allows open source tools for the back end storage and open source tools for the access on top. And this is the, the access on top of Archive Matica and the preservation environment. For the last couple minutes, I thought I would describe the company, Artifactual Systems, which put this out. They have a, an open source ecosystem that they, they talk about. There's a, the software is in the middle, and the software is the blue part. And I don't know if you can tell, the left-hand circle is users, the right-hand circle is foundation or steering committee, and the bottom circle is service providers. And each one of these are groups of people who have to work to make open source software work. Because the software is dependent on the social infrastructure. It's not something that just develops on its own. And you'll notice that these are double-headed arrows, which I think is kind of interesting, because it shows the kind of social, technical environment that open source comes from. That open source software requires users to add code, time, money, and knowledge to the software. And then they can get software out to work with it. There are people who can provide services for the open source software so that users can eventually use it and contribute to more. And there's a foundation or steering committee that helps with time, money, and knowledge to kind of control how the open source software is created. Additionally, Artifactual Systems, who put together Archivematic or kind of started the work on it, said, we're not going to charge you to sell the software but we're gonna charge you if you have any in-depth questions in terms of hosting, installation, integration, development, uh, technical support training, system analysis, strategy. It's gonna cost you $125 an hour. I thought it was a pretty interesting business model, and it also kind of explains how a company would go to this much trouble to put together a system, and how they could buy it. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Archivematica, how you can have individual disparate tools that can come together in a big system, and how that one big system through microservices can act, and how that system can couple with access and storage systems on the underneath, all for an open source tool for preservation. One of their biggest stores is about 16 terabytes from the, uh, the city of Vancouver when they hosted the Olympics. Uh, the archive that's preserving that Olympic material, including videos and documents and databases. They're one of the first people to start using the system. So I'm happy to answer any questions. And thank you very much for spending a half an hour talking about open source tools and archives. <laughs>
the user. Like, if I visit the library and I want to look at one. There's never, the, the flow doesn't go backwards. The user never usually adds anything into the system unless it's, and that would be the access system, which is different from the preservation system. The only people who are interacting with Archivematica are the archivists, right? There's an access system on top of that that would allow the users to look up the catalog and see, oh, I've got these pages, and then I can uh, review things. Um, now, you could have a system which is Web 2.0 based where somebody might add tags or comments to it, but the raw file itself always will be stored in that archival storage, and that's where you'll run the checksum and make sure that the fixity remains intact and that nobody has modified it or changed it. So a user is never going to be able to upload their file into the system, uh, assuming that your business model for the archive is we've got materials that we're sharing with you, not that it's a, um, a community-based archive where individuals can't upload things. And there are systems like that. Yeah, I was actually thinking of the, the, when you consult an archive and get the document, uh -huh. if you want to do further work in that document, not, not necessarily to put it back, but being able to and I guess the, the yeah. reason for the question is that it looks like the, I would think that the common format for all documents would be just a scanning, but that would be a no. good way to go. No, 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 it. because if you, if you have a, digital, a born digital document, it's already electronic, so you don't have to convert it into a PDF. And PDF may not need, meet your user's needs at all. So um, there, there, there are kind of two ways to do this. Um, when I log into a digital archive, um, I might bring down a copy of the file to my hard drive. I might make a copy, right? Or I might open up a viewer, and the viewer allows me to see the document. Now, a viewer makes sense if you're only interested in a PDF copy, or a video, or something like that. But if it's a document where you're interested in track changes, something like that, a viewer isn't going to work for you. Um, there's a lot of questions with access. That's why in uh, electronic records projects, people usually don't talk about access. <laughs> so they, they talk about like, keeping it, and then access is the last part. It's always the case. And about 10 years, we'll have access projects all over the place. Anyway, I have to talk too long. Thank you.